Hello, Church family. This is Paul Villajero. Welcome to our Christmas series on living the Christian life. Now, all of us are familiar with the song, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. The lyrics goes like this. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. And there's a line in there that says, he knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. My friends, our culture has propagated the idea of the story of Santa Claus coming into our homes the night before Christmas to drop off gifts. But there is one requirement or one condition for this to happen. The requirement to be able to receive a gift from Santa Claus is that you have to be nice, not naughty. You have to be good. Now, growing up, some of us may have shared the same perception of God, believing that since God is always watching us, so we ought to put on our best behavior. Our Santa Claus perception of God is that somehow, by our good behavior, that by being good, we could earn enough favor and that he would be pleased with us. But my friends, in reality, we have the message backwards. When Moses presented the Ten Commandments, it was to make us aware of our condition, that nothing we do can earn our salvation. All our lives, we may have assumed that Christianity is a list of non-negotiable rules that we have to follow. So we strive to be good just for goodness sake, as the song goes, as though somehow by our efforts, by our best efforts, by giving our best, we might earn God's favor. Yet, keeping the law and rules was never intended to save us. It was only intended to reveal our need for God. The old covenant was to make us aware of our need of grace. In fact, God's grace is what actually changes us. And so the message of Christmas is that God clothed himself with human flesh and extended grace towards us so that the relationship that was fractured, the relationship that was broken between us and God, and God because of our sinful choices, it could be restored by our Lord's finished work on the cross and not by our best efforts. Friends, on Christmas Day, when we sit down with family and loved ones, we may have a tradition of exchanging gifts. And when someone gives us a gift, what do we do? Do we say, oh no, not this gift, I'm not worthy of it. Do we say that? Of course not. We take the gift and rip the wrapping paper to see what we got. Once we have opened the gift, we respond with two simple words to the giver. Thank you. Two simple words. Thank you. My friends, God has extended a gift towards humanity, towards you and me in the person of Jesus Christ, not because we deserve it or because we have earned his favor. Instead, it is a favor and grace from him towards all of us, a gift offered to us free of charge. Scripture tells us, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. It is by grace, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift from God, not by works, so that no one can boast, my friends. It is a gift from God. That's God's grace. And the only requirement, the only condition is we have to acknowledge that we need it. Because we need it because we are sinful that we cannot save ourselves by trying to be good. We need to acknowledge that we need God's grace. So my friends, if you have never extended your hands to receive God's gift of grace towards you, will you choose to receive it, receive it today and tell God, thank you. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, our gracious God, we humbly receive your gift of Jesus Christ with gratitude. Thank you that you so love the world 
that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, thank you, Father, for giving us this gift, the true gift of Christmas, the gift of your Son, the gift of grace. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us today, church family. Let's live our lives in gratitude to the Father's best gift of all, the gift of Christmas, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior.